CBS4 investigator Katie Weiss has been following the Wild Horse program for the past year. Katie traveled to another holding facility in Nebraska to give us a deeper look into how your tax dollars are being used to remove horses from the wild then care for them in captivity. Last year, it cost $78 million in taxpayer money to care for nearly 60,000 wild horses and burros rounded up out of the wild and moved into holding facilities that are managed by the Bureau of Land Management, like this one in Maxwell, Nebraska. Now, some horse advocates say that's a waste of taxpayer dollars, but the BLM says it's a necessary expense. I mean, we've got a big bunch on a wet meadow right now. About a four hour drive northeast of Denver. Harry Haythorn runs this off range pasture for wild horses. It's one of dozens of private facilities across the U.S. that have federal contracts to hold wild horses long term. Because these facilities are private, it's unusual the public gets a look inside. Hello. But our news cameras were given a rare tour of Haythorn's inner operations. I like to call it an all inclusive resort. When the BLM rounds up horses out of the wild, they're sent to short term holding facilities like the one in Canyon City in southern Colorado. From there, many horses are adopted, but those that aren't are said to long-term holding, <laughs> like Haythorn's Ranch. The federal government pays him $1 million a year to house nearly 1,000 once wild horses, a contract he says saved the ranch that has been in his family for generations. This gives us a steady income. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme by any means. To some people, they might say, that's a lot of money. So how is this not a get-rich-quick scheme? It costs about six hundred and fifty to 750000 a year just to keep the lights on. The excessive use of tax dollars here is, is deeply concerning. There's clearly a far more cost-effective way of managing these horses. Scott Wilson is a wildlife photographer and board member for the American Wild Horse Campaign. He says removing horses from the wild is unnecessary and cruel. The wild horses have no voice. That's why we have to speak up for them and defend their right. But John Neal with the BLM says removals are critical to controlling the horse population. In the drought conditions, when there's an overpopulation of animals and animals run out of feed and water, um, it's, it's a horrible way for these horses to have to live. Advocates disagree. There are 30 times the number of cattle and sheep on these lands set aside for the protection of wild horses than there are horses. The BLM is currently seeking more contracts for long-term holding pastures and plans to remove 20,000 more wild horses and burros from public lands nationwide this year. That worries advocates not only about possible tax dollar waste, but also for the horse's welfare, saying removal causes injuries and deaths. And I would say stop. You, you cannot pile more horses into a broken system. Haythorn says less than 1% of horses on his ranch have died, and the BLM inspects his facility once a month. His wife, children, and even grandkids work the ranch and say the horses have become a part of the family. Man, do we love taking care of these horses. They just give you a good feeling, and, and I'm not going to have to hire a psychiatrist. It's really cheap psychiatric care for me and, and my family, I know that. Now the BLM says it has a comprehensive animal welfare program. To learn more about that, just head to our website, cbsdenver.com. Reporting in Maxwell, Nebraska, I'm Katie Weiss covering Colorado First.